Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you to local media for being here. Thank you for those watching us on 74.3 or watching us online. I'm Ed McNeil, Director of Marketing and Communications for the City of Winston-Salem. And the city wanted to gather a news conference today to provide you an opportunity to hear from key staff members to talk about information that's important to our citizens out there. We want to talk about roads and safety and uh, not only the roads that the city is responsible for maintaining, but also to hear from state officials about the roads they maintain. So uh, the order of our news conference today, we'll hear from city manager Lee Garrity. We'll hear from assistant chief Wilson Weaver, who is over our patrol division. We'll hear from Ryan Newcomb. Uh, Ryan is an assistant director in Department of Transportation and is over the streets team that's responsible for clearing the roadways. We'll have John Ryan from Division 9 of the, and the maintenance engineer for the Department of uh, Transportation, the State Department of Transportation. Assistant Chief Brown from the Fire Department, as well as Mel Sadler from our Emergency Management Division. So we'll begin now hearing from our city manager, Mr. Lee Garrity. Thank you, Ed. As many of you may, may know, this is the most significant snow event, snow event that this city has faced in about 15 years. We were prepared for it. The event is under control, but roads are still in very bad shape. We'll hear from Assistant Chief Weaver in a moment about how all motorists should stay off the roads. Unless you have an emergency, please do not go out. We are working around the clock to get life back to normal. But be patient, it's going to take some time. City emergency services are all up and running. If you have an emergency, a true emergency, please call 911. If you have other needs from the city or questions about city services, when will my trash be collected, please call 311. We are there 311 around the clock as well, so call that number. Uh, just for your information, all sanitation services are suspended until Monday. So. Don't put your trash out until Monday. Today and last night, I personally visited with many of our employees. They are an amazing group of dedicated public servants. With a great sense of spirit and commitment, they are out there working around the clock for all of us. They're putting the needs of citizens ahead of their own family needs. I know their families are concerned about them, but they are out there, our, our law enforcement our streets crews, our fire department, even our folks in City Link, uh, who, which is our 311 center. They're working around the clock to answer your calls. We are dedicated to bring the city back to complete normalcy, but it's going to take a little while. Um, I'm going to ask Chief Weaver, Assistant Chief Weaver, who is in the police department, who's over our patrol division, to come tell you a little more about the, about the, the state of the streets. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Garrity. I'm Wilson Weaver, Assistant Police Chief, Winston-Salem Police Department, over the Patrol and Special Operations Divisions. The first thing I'd like to say is that the streets are in extremely bad shape. Even though they're being worked on by both state and local Department of Transportation, we're still having issues with the streets being covered, especially our secondary and, and non-primary roads. Uh, but our citizens have listened to and heeded our warnings in reference to staying off the streets. Yesterday afternoon, between 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock in the evening, we had 166 accidents. Those accidents range from small, minor bump ups or fender benders all the way into some overturned vehicles. We contrast that with today's numbers, which from 6 o'clock this morning until 2 o'clock this afternoon, we've only responded to about 10 accidents. So that's been real well, and we're extremely encouraged that our citizens are heeding our warnings. They're staying off the streets. What we'd like to say is that we'd like for that to continue throughout tonight, also throughout tomorrow, until we can get a better assessment of how our roadways actually are. But it's real good for our citizens to stay off the streets at this point in time. Our maintenance people are trying to do their thing to uh, ensure that the roadways are as clear as possible, but they're still extremely dangerous. They're still extremely hazardous. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ryan Newcomb. I'm the Assistant Director for the City of Winston-Salem's Department of Transportation. 
<clears throat> First off, I'd like to say a special thanks to the city departments that volunteered personnel and also to the personnel of the Department of Transportation. I'd like the citizens of Winston-Salem to know that our folks have worked extremely hard over the last 48 hours and are continuing to work extremely hard to get the city streets clear and back up and running. I'm happy to report that in most routes throughout the city, we have made a lot of headway on our city major streets and are beginning to progress down to our city collector streets. Uh, however, understand that overnight tonight, temperatures are going to get very cold below freezing. So we are likely to see a lot of areas that have standing water or running water on the streets refreeze. So our crews will continue pushing and plowing snow. We'll likely have to do some salting again early tomorrow morning. So my advice to folks would be, unless you have to be out, please wait until at least the temperatures rise above freezing tomorrow before trying to venture out. Our goal, if everything works well for us this afternoon and evening, would be to get through collector streets and into residential neighborhoods by tomorrow morning. But again, that plan is solely contingent on how much it freezes tonight and how much progress we're able to make before those temperatures drop below freezing. And that's where the city stands right now with city streets, and I'm going to turn it over to John Ryan from NCDOT. Thank you, Ryan. Um, my name is John Ryan, North Carolina Department of Transportation, Division Maintenance Engineer uh, for the Division 9 area, which includes Forsyth County. Uh, currently have 78 pieces of equipment out working. We spread over 1,200 tons of salt uh, in the surrounding area. Uh, currently working on the interstates and primary roads. Uh, they are beginning to look pretty good. We will continue working on those this evening, um, making good progress. As Ryan said, the temperatures are supposed to drop into the 20s. And that will, um, that will reverse some of our efforts, unfortunately. So tomorrow morning, the roads will be slick, black ice and such, and would ask drivers to stay in again uh, as much as possible. Uh, we will have crews working overnight uh, and uh, try to uh, maintain what we've got. Tomorrow, we hope to get into the secondary routes, uh, those neighborhood roads. And uh, hopefully, uh, by the end of the weekend, we can get everybody uh, moving again. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Harry Brown with the um, Assistant Chief of Operations with the Winston Fire Department. Basically, um, we've been out with the police department on several of those accidents he spoke about earlier. Um, yesterday, from about noon to about 6.30 this morning, we answered somewhere between us in the vicinity of 30 or 40 of those accidents, with a lot of them being overturned vehicles. So we are asking citizens to stay off of the roads. Um, on top of that, we are asking, since the temperature is also low now, that um, the heaters that people are using, we've been on several calls where we've gone on basically smoke scares, they're not actual fires, but we've have been having a lot of problems with heating units, uh, portable heaters. We're asking everybody to make sure you have plenty of um, distance around those heaters. Um, any kind of, take any kind of non-combustibles away from those heaters so that um, you and your family will stay safe. Also, um, we've been on a couple of calls where we've had uh, CO2 type poisonings. Um, not actual poisonings, but we've been on those type of calls. We're asking people to make sure if you're using grills and stuff of that nature, do not put them to the, to the effect where they will be inside of your house. You know, make sure you got plenty of ventilation. Um, and things of that nature so that we can keep those CO2 calls to a minimum, keep it the family safe. And that's pretty much what we have. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Mel Sadler, uh, Emergency Management Director for the City of Winston-Salem and Forsyth County. I want to piggyback on something that Chief Brown just mentioned. Uh, that is the CO2 uh, combustion, combustible uh, heaters and uh, carbon monoxide. We want to make sure that everybody understands that this is not the time of year to operate any kind of a combustible heater indoors. Uh, we have in the past had several fatalities uh, from carbon monoxide, the use of carbon monoxide uh, heaters inside. We want to make sure everybody is cautious about that. 
we have been really, really fortunate from the standpoint that we've not had much ice in the area. Therefore, we've had very little power outages. Uh, we've been on conference calls with Duke Energy as well as the state of North Carolina. And in areas to the east and to the south of us, there's a great deal of uh, concern in respect to electrical uh, disruption. We've not had that here. Everyone has been kind enough to stay off the roads. If you have an opportunity to stay at home, we recommend you take advantage of those, those opportunities. And uh, we'll, we will be prepared, if necessary, to open shelters uh, for heat, uh, 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 loss of power situations. But <clears throat> at, up, as of this point, we've not had a situation like that. And we are hopeful that we'll continue in that manner. We do want to remind everyone, of course, that uh, if you do have to go out in your automobiles, be sure to put an emergency kit in there with you. You want to make sure you have items such as uh, batteries, you have uh, communication equipment, cell phone or a, uh, uh, some other electronic device. You want to make sure you have batteries, uh, uh, batteries and that you have uh, lights, communication gear, food, and blanket. Because uh, as we experienced in Atlanta a couple weeks ago, we don't know how long we're going to be in our vehicle once we get into it. Uh, there were people who were spent up to six to 12 hours in vehicles a couple of weeks ago, we want to make sure that doesn't happen here. But by the same token, if it does occur, we want to make sure you're prepared. Also, we want to recommend that everyone have a three-day supply kit in their homes. Uh, we have information in respect to what ought to be in that kit, and I won't go through those items right now. But we do recommend that you have those items because you have to be aware that it is possible that uh, up to a three-day period may pass before you, uh, respondents can get to you if there is enough, a, a large enough response or a large enough disaster. So we want everyone to be prepared to support themselves. We thank you for your time, and we'll turn it back over to Ed, uh, our moderator. I'm going to ask all our speakers to come back to answer some questions. And as they return, uh, what I want to do is also to just take a moment and, and try to help the public understand that this is a huge partnership. I think in, it's easy to look at any street inside the city limits and say, well, is the city going to, uh, going to be responsible for clearing that street, or is it the state? Well, honestly, I, I can say it for you, the citizens don't care. And our responsibility is to get out there with this partnership to take care of those streets and to get everything that needs to be done, done. A um, couple things that we do want to come back and give our speakers an opportunity to talk about is one of the things that we saw yesterday was abandoned vehicles. And as we talk to the police department today, there's a message that they want to bring forward with vehicles that might have been left on the streets yesterday and today. Assistant Chief Weaver. Sure. Yesterday, because of the conditions with the roadways, uh, people were unable to either get up hills or get out of intersections, get off the side of the road, or just move with their vehicles in any manner. So we had a significant number of vehicles. I don't have the exact number, but we have a significant number of vehicles that were actually left on the sides of roads actually in the travel lanes. We've had them left in intersections. Because our maintenance groups cannot get through to clean those roads or do what they need to do to take care of the roadways, we are having to tow some of those vehicles. So if you've left a vehicle in the roadway or near the roadway or in an intersection somewhere that's inside the travel lanes, those vehicles may be towed. You can contact the police department at the non-emergency number. That's 773-7700. Repeating, 773-7700. Give them a description of your vehicle, the license plate number of the vehicle, and we can tell you whether or not we have had to have that vehicle towed so that the maintenance crews can uh, address the roadways. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. At this time, our speakers will take your questions. Assistant Chief Weaver, where are the vehicles being taken, the ones being towed? We're calling the next out record service and the next out record that happens to be in the rotation to get that uh, particular call will tow that vehicle to their lot. So it's going to work on a case-by-case -case basis. Therefore, if you do contact the police department at the non-emergency number, give them a description of your vehicle and the license plate number, they can tell you which record service towed your vehicle into which lot. I know you said you didn't have an exact number. Are we talking dozens of vehicles, hundreds? I don't think they're into the hundreds, but it's, it's several dozen. We've had them all citywide left in travel lanes. Uh, and in trying to get those roadways cleared, they're going to be all over the city. So, Do you have any idea how many weather-related deaths or injuries have occurred so far since the storm hit? I've not been made aware of any at this point. No deaths. What about injuries? 
I don't have a number on any injuries. We've had some that occurred as a result of wrecks. We've had some that have occurred as a result of falls. I don't have a, a number on that. That may be better answered by uh, emergency medical services. You would characterize the accidents that you had in Winston-Salem for the most part as, as minor fender benders? Uh, they've, they've ranged the full spectrum from minor fender benders all the way over to several overturned vehicles. So it, it's, it's gone across the entire spectrum. But as, as far as you know, no major injuries from those accidents? I can't speak to major injuries. We've not had any fatalities related to that, but I'm sure we have had some injuries related to those wrecks. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for joining us live today. Uh, again, this has been our news conference to try to update the public on what's going on with our response to the storm. We'll have this video played back on WSTV 13. You can learn more information um, as we update things through the city's Twitter feed and by finding us on Facebook. Again, thank you for joining us today.